Hello, everyone, and welcome to Point A to Point B Transition Weekly Webinar. We are joined by Catherine Morgan, the founder and chief career transition expert at Point A to B about how to have a great interview. I'm going to hand things over to Catherine. Thank you, Matthew. We're going to talk today about have a, how to have a great interview because one, I've been working with people on interviewing for a long time, uh, full time since I started my company. It's something that everybody feels like they need to get better at, and it's something that absolutely paralyzes people into panic. Um, I had a conversation with a woman in the UK who was going to her first interview in 16 years. She had her own company. She was in a business development role. She could sit with the big wigs of major global organizations, but she could not get a word out about herself. And in telling you, it doesn't have to be that way. You can create um, the confidence to have a great interview easily. So let me tell you what's working for people and some things you might not have considered. First of all, you need to change your inner game. Like anything else, job search, career transition is all about your inner game, what you're telling yourself, how you feel about your best skills, how you present your best value, and I wanna urge you to step into your power. When you step into your power, you are solid. You're aligned, you're grounded, you feel open and not constricted. And if that's a little woo-woo for you, just remember to breathe. Because <laughs> we all know we need to breathe. And when you're stepping into your power, you get a little bit of objectivity and distance. And you say to yourself, I'm interviewing them as much as they are interviewing me. You need to be listening for the things that you're looking for and watching out for red flags. And when you get that distance, as opposed to, you know, getting too close to it, you can actually present yourself in a much better way. And I'd like to ask you to just think of interviewing as a conversation. It's a talk. I'm talking to this person or to these people via video or in person or however it works. It's just a conversation. Most of the people I work with are senior level professionals. They do strategy, they do marketing, they do sales, they do business development. These are the kind of conversations that if they were having outside of an interview setting, they'd be thrilled to be having, over the moon, excited. When you're talking to an organization, they're telling you about their goals, their strategy, their short-term plan, their long-term plan, what they've tried that didn't work, how you can help them. This is a delicious conversation for the types of people that I work with. And if you think about it that way, it's not scary. It's a conversation. It's interesting. It's fascinating. But you are going to be excited. You should be excited. If you're not excited, that's probably not the right job for you. But you should be excited and not anxious. In your body, these things can feel similar. Yours get a little, little in the body. But remember, excited's good. Excited means you're not phoning it in. Anxious um, is constricted. Anxious means you're not taking full breaths. Anxious is not butterflies in your stomach, but like, you know, a Cuisinart going, and you're, like, it's not good. Um, here's some ways to sort of trick your body into feeling excited, not anxious. Definitely remember to breathe. When we're nervous, we tend to take shorter breaths, not as deep. We're not getting enough oxygen. Maybe they're rapid. Maybe we're just forgetting to breathe, period. I know this sounds basic. We breathe all day long. But in an anxiety-provoking situation like an interview, 
it's very helpful to remember to breathe. Stay grounded, stay in your power, breathe. Also, and this is maybe more true for women than men, don't wear something that's too tight around the middle. I know it's totally tempting to put on the shapewear or whatever you want to call it, um, but don't be constricted around the middle because you're going to forget to breathe anyway, and this just makes it harder. Now, one technique um, that's super helpful, I use it all the time, and you can do it absolutely anywhere in the waiting room while you're waiting to meet with somebody in your car before you go into an interview is called box breathing. And it sounds a little woo woo. It isn't, it works. So if you're like getting that uh, and you're like spacing out or you can't remember, you're, afraid, you're blanking out, you're having any of these sort of anxiety, panicky reactions, box breathing is the fastest way I know to get back on track. So what that is, is it's an even count of inhaling, one, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. It, you have to keep the tempo exactly the same. So if you're in that pit, at first, it might be a faster count. It might be one, two, three, four. And then slowly make the count longer, but it has to be the same for the entire box. And that works miracles. I've used this when I'm speaking in public and people are asking me for techniques and they, they've, I've gotten thank you notes saying that that was just amazing. Um, another thing that can help eliminate some of the anxiety about interviews is to know that there are different kinds of interviews uh, so you know what to expect and how to prepare. Um, for your first interview with a company, the person you talk to may or may not uh, know a lot about the job title, may or may not know a lot about the group, may or may not know a lot about, um, they may be outsourced actually. A lot of big companies outsource this first round of interviews. And a lot of companies are going to an AI type of situation where you're given questions on a screen with nothing to react to and you have to talk for 30 minutes, one minute, something. Um, it's fine. We can talk about how to prep for that at a different time. But these are going to be check the box interviews. These, you're not going to get a lot of love back from the person you're talking to a lot of times. A lot of times they're going to ask you the same questions you filled out in the online application, the same questions that you answered or should be answered in your resume if they actually read it. And you're thinking to yourself, you have my resume in front of them. Did you read it? But they're going to still ask you the questions and you're going to feel like, especially on the phone, if it's not a face to face, that they're just checking the box. And by the way, that's exactly what they're doing. Check the box. So don't let that throw you off your game. Your, your inner, your, the demons, the little things on the side are going to be saying, I'm bombing, I'm bombing, I'm bombing. You're not bombing. It's a check the box interview. Um, a human resources interview could be chummy, could be check the box. A peer interview, they might really test you on what you know, how you fit. There might be a little bit of sort of competition a little bit, just, you know, I know, do you know? you know, getting sort of jockeying for a position. Hiring managers, definitely going to want to know what you know. Um, that's going to be the one that you're going to really need to know if that's a fit, because that's the person who's going to be overseeing your progress through the organization, and you're going to have a lot of interaction with probably. So you're going to want to prepare for that, but really look for fit. Senior leadership interviews, depending on where you are in the reporting structure, if you're sort of at an administrative level and you're interviewing with a small company and you have to talk to the CEO or the president, you might be flipped out. But in general, you've been through a couple interviews and this is just the final blessing before they come back with an offer. Often that interview is very nice and maybe completely off topic and they, he might just be telling you about the organization or his vision or how excited he is that you're going to join or whatever, uh, or she, no, no gender bias here. 
Uh, however, if you're coming in at an executive level and you're interviewing with executive leadership, that's going to be more like a hiring manager interview, and they're going to really take you through the paces, ask, maybe ask you to give presentation, maybe ask you to solve a business problem. Um, there's a, a million ways these interviews happen these days, but just if you're interviewing three, four, five levels above you, those are actually the ones that tend to be easier. So don't like stress out about those. Um, these days, a lot of companies are doing video interviews. A lot of companies are doing group interviews. A lot of companies are doing panel interviews. Um, each of these requires a little different strategy. Uh, feel free to reach out to us and work with me or my colleague, Matthew Fox, and we'll talk you through how to ace those. And here's something to remember. You take a little bit of the pressure off yourself your only goal for the interview is to get to the next interview. That's it. You may have felt like you bombed two questions. You may have wished you answered something differently. You can address that in the thank you note, by the way. But your interview only has one goal. If you got at, to the next conversation, it was a big, big winner. And please, whatever you do, do not alter your personality. Be the best version of yourself, absolutely. But do not change who you are to try and fit with what you perceive they're looking for. I promise you that tale never ends well. Don't do it. X number of months in, one, two, five, uh, you will be miserable and you will, will quit. I um, had a client who disregarded my advice on taking a job, ended up quitting six weeks later because that's what happens when you fake a fit. So here's the good news about fit. There needs to be fit on both sides. Your skills, your interests, their needs, their corporate culture, I used to poo-poo the idea of corporate culture until I worked for two organizations that on paper were identical. Global organizations, consulting organizations, X number of people more or less the same, service offerings more or less the same. And you're like, ah, oh, it's probably, you know, the same when you work there. No, utterly different. One was very individual focused, very competitive, very political. The other one was collegial, collaborative. We really liked each other. We laughed a lot. We worked really, really hard and we had a great time doing it. So couldn't have been more different. One was a fit for me, one was not a fit for me. And I, and I would have stayed because it was a great name on my resume. But I can tell you that corporate culture is a thing and each organization is its own entity and has its own sort of rules and pulse and vibe. And you need to really look at whether that's right for you. The good news is if you think it's a great fit, if you walked in there and you're like, oh, I, I love the way this feels. I love the design. I love it. I kind of like the people. I had this great conversation. The coffee smelled amazing. You know, whatever it is that you liked about it, you went off topic with one of your peer interviews and you were talking about restaurants or wine tasting or your puppies or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, you just felt like, at, the, at ease, like it was a conversation, that's great. And if you felt it, and if the interview went off topic and you, you really got to know these people, that's a really good sign. And they probably think it's a fit too. But you have to relinquish control. All you can do is show up and do your best. The way, um, the way you, you dress, the way you prepare, the way you research, the way you practice your answers, the way you show up on time, being professional, all you can do is control you. You have zero control over how they react. Um, they may really, really like you, and then there's a hiring freeze. They may really, really like you, but there was an internal candidate and somebody uh, uh, a level or two ahead said you have to hire the internal person. 
there's a million things that go on in this process. It's very strange and broken and whatever. So you have to relinquish control. You can only control how you show up. And here's the thing people tell me is the most helpful. Be interested, but not attached. You're interested, you're enthusiastic, you do your best, but you are not attached to the outcome. The outcome may have no data points for you to obsess about. If you answered this question this way and you could have gone this way, if you had worn the blue suit instead of the brown suit, if you had done the million things, we spin, we spin, we spin, we come up, we try and make sense out of situations. It's how the human brain is wired. In this case, that is a fool's errand because there's so much of this process that does not make any sense. So be interested, but not attached to the outcome. On the other hand, if there are specific learnings, things you could have done better, um, then go get the help you need or practice or do whatever it is you need to fix that. Uh, Matthew and I were speaking at a job search networking group and a woman raised her hand and she said, you know what, I do really well in the phone interviews, but the in-person interviews, I don't know what happened. Something happens and I don't make it to the next stage. I, I need to fix this. And we worked with her. I worked with her. Matthew worked with her. I worked with her some more. And we got her rock solid. And she got her next job. And then she's being considered for something else. Um, this is so easily fixable, folks. So if there's some adjustments you need to make, great. If you can do it yourself, that's totally fine. If you need some help, talk to us. And please try to have fun with this. These are interesting conversations. You'll learn something about yourself. You'll learn something about the company. You'll learn what's a fit, what's not a fit. Um, try, try to just take the energy of curiosity. And um, for those of us who've been in sales and maybe had to sell vaporware at some point, I always looked at interviewing as you know, a much easier sale because I was selling something, it was me. I was the product, but I was really comfortable with that product. So if that's helpful to you, use that. But seriously, um, this doesn't have to be scary. Yes, you'll be excited. Yes, you'll get butterflies and you should because you should be that engaged, but it doesn't have to, it, it doesn't have to make you paralyzed with fear. It really can be fun. It's just a conversation. If you have any questions, uh, Catherine Morgan, I am a career transition expert and business consultant, and you can reach us at point A to point B transitions. Thank you for watching.